getting over the sadness of my miscarriages was very different than um, when I wasn't pregnant at all. It's just literally talking to God like you, he's your best friend is like, the, God loves that. When we talk to him as if he is the one and only. Uh, fun Christmas traditions you would recommend to young families. What are your thoughts on the three days of darkness? This is very scary to me. The next one is, I am a gay man. Can I still attend mass and be practicing? What are your boundaries surrounding technology with your kids? Do you have a hard time making and keeping friends? Hey friends, okay, so today's video, I'm just gonna do a Q&A. It's been so long, probably over a year since I've done a Q&A. And I'm working on a lot of Advent videos right now, and I already did do a couple, so if you uh, pay attention or follow along, like you've seen them, but I have a whole bunch more. But I thought this would be like a good break to just talk about life. I went over on Instagram and I asked if you guys had any questions and you guys had so many questions. So uh, so I'm going to get into it, try to answer as many as I can. This is really casual. I didn't even really do my hair. I just went to, um, I am a part of a group called Walking With Purpose and it's a Catholic Bible study. It's awesome. It's nationwide. If you have one in your area, I highly recommend going. It is so awesome. If you're looking for fellowship, ours is awesome because they have a little child care. So Maria goes and plays with the other kids while I get to talk to moms. And it's not just for moms either. It's for, you know, women, grandparents. It's also for people who aren't married yet. It's for any woman. So highly recommend it. It's called Walking With Purpose. I will link their information down below in case you are looking for some fellowship. So there's a lot of really good questions in here and I'm just gonna kind of pick them at random and try to get as many as I can in like 20 minutes. So anyway, the first one is how do you deal with anxiety? Uh, honestly, thank God, I, I pray a, about a lot of things, just being anxious. I just try to pray through that. Prayer is the best way to go about it. But I mean, there are definitely circumstances too. So whatever the circumstances, like there have been times where I have struggled with anxiety and it's like totally circumstance. And so obviously we have to pray through those too, but also ask God for the wisdom to help us through that anxiety. Like, what is it? I do a lot of like, what's the worst case scenario in my head. And for some people that is like not the thing to do, but for me, it gives me comfort of like, oh, okay, like that's okay. It helps me to kind of problem solve if things were to get bad, if that makes sense. Um, how do you wean from breastfeeding your, your babies? I just, you know, it's funny, Bella just did it automatically at like eight months. <laughs> I was like, I was stunned because she's the only one who like just was done. She was too busy to do it. Um, but the rest of them, I just kind of, you know, one day I was like, no, I offered them something else instead. And that's how I wean them. Prayers or devotions that got you through your husband being gone. Mine is gone now. Oh my goodness. I, it is hard. I, I still think back of last year and I don't know how I did half of the things. Obviously it was the grace of God, but um, the rosary by far helped me a lot. Sometimes I didn't even have it in me to do the rosary. And so the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and if you're at that stage where you're like, I can't even do the Divine Mercy Chaplet, then just Jesus, I trust in you. Like those are truly the things that got me through last year. Um, how you overcame the sadness of waiting to get pregnant. I, I mean, I don't know. That was something I didn't really get over. Um, I found out I was pregnant and so that was great. But it was like, I was very sad to that day, you know, to the, before I found out I was pregnant. I just thought it would never happen for me. Um, and so I never really fully got over that. Now I will say getting over the sadness of my miscarriages was very different than um, when I wasn't pregnant at all. I, I kind of had to grieve that a little bit in a different way because I knew I had a child that I was never gonna hold in my arms and that was just like, it's just something that I, you never think is gonna happen until it happens and I had three miscarriages and so it was, each one of them were very different but 
for me. I, I named the baby and I <clears throat> one of them actually came out and we buried the baby in, in our backyard. And I every time I look over there, I still think of my babies. So it is interesting. Um, but yeah, waiting, overcoming the sadness. I mean, I, I don't know. It was very hard to know that God's in control and that he knows the future and that we just need to trust in him. I think is so important. Uh, what are some things you can do to get better at prayer if you're not Catholic? Um, well, I think, and yeah, anybody can pray. And even if you're not Catholic, like God still hears our prayers. Just literally talking to God, like he's your best friend is like, the, God loves that. When we talk to him as if he is the one and only, you know, which he is and he should be. But there's a video out that I can't remember his name. I think it's Gabby After Hours and he does a video on mental prayer and it's amazing. It's so good. I will link that down below, but he talks about like getting deeper into prayer and that's something that I have always struggled with. I can literally think about God 24 seven, but to go into a deeper prayer, that is something that I struggle with. I've always struggled with. And his video, I sent it to all my family and friends. I'm like, this is amazing. Um, and my mom, she watched it and she's like, I still struggle. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, it, it didn't click with me. I want it to, but that is something that I still struggle with. But I'll send it to you because maybe it'll click with you guys. But pretty much mental prayer is like one of the deepest form of like personal prayer that you can go into. It's supposed to be amazing. I think I've only had it like a handful of times in my life, but there are people who literally every time they pray, they get to that like deep mental prayer. And so it's amazing. Um, so anyway, I will link that down below. Do you have a hard time making and keeping friends? Uh, not really. I have a very easygoing personality, very, almost too easygoing probably. And I laugh at everything and I'm cheerful. And I think that attracts people. Um, keeping friends, you know, I, I would say Marco Polo. <laughs> I Marco Polo all my like really, really good friends daily. Like I have a, a list of my friends that I've through the years had and, um, and we Marco Polo all the time. So that is a great way. I think if it's hard for you to make friends, it might be something that like, you're not being vulnerable enough. I know for me, the more I open up and the more like human I am, the more people open up to me. And I think that's, um, that's something that everybody likes. They like to be able to relate to you. And the only way to be relatable is to be vulnerable with who you really are. And, um, and so that is something that if you're struggling with friends, um, it might be that you're just having a hard time being vulnerable and you can't just like go out and be vulnerable, right? It's something where it's like, you kind of Put a little bit out there and a little bit more but i would say it's pretty easy for me to make friends and but i do have like my really core group of friends that i go deeper with if that makes sense so yeah so um so it's not hard for me at all but there has been times in my life where i did, felt like i didn't have friends you know or like really deep friends and that made me like really sad um how do you stay in shape um oh my goodness i could do a whole video on this i okay i don't i could do a whole video on this i don't know how much i should get into but i am maria will be three this week okay and people still come up to me and ask me if i'm pregnant or i should say they have like two two months ago i think i finally cracked the code i've been always just kind of naturally slender that's just the genetics that you know both my parents were like that and then when my mom hit 40 she kind of got a tummy and i hit 40 and i got this tummy to the point where people literally my friends i haven't seen in a while come up and they're like oh my goodness i didn't know you were pregnant and it's really awkward and I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm just like, and even the year that Eric was gone, I had friends come up to me. I mean, Eric was physically gone and they, they're like, oh my goodness, you're pregnant. So, and I have friends who witnessed it several times. So anyway, very embarrassing. Um, 
I felt more embarrassed for them though. For me, I'm like, oh, I just feel bad like that, you know. Um, but I just recently found 281 Fix. I think that's the name of it. It's like where you follow the little cups. And I've always been told like macros is a great way to go, but I, I did not get macros. I don't understand. I still to this day don't because it's like 30, 40, 40 or 30. Um, and, but I've heard that that's the best way to do it. Like, and so anyway, I feel like I finally cracked the code because I finally lost like an actual pound um, after being stagnant for a year. So, um, so that has actually worked for me and protein. My biggest thing is protein. I've never been a big protein person. I love carbs, but somebody, I watched a video cause I was like, I have to crack the code. I've tried, I feel like everything, but, um, someone finally said, if you have enough protein, you won't crave anything and that was the first thing that I was like oh my goodness so I tried that and I you know I'll eat cottage cheese and I will eat chicken and beef and you know all the things and it was so true like I used to crave sugar like you would not believe and chocolate especially around the three to four hour and now I'll have a chocolate like shake like a protein shake you know where you just add water and it's chocolate and I finally don't look pregnant. I know that sounds so weird to say, but like the rest of me like look normal and fine, but I just have this like belly where I look five months pregnant. And I know people are gonna be like, no, no, no. I truly honestly looked five months pregnant. So, um, <clears throat> so it's kind of nice cause my tummy has gone down and I'll like link it down below. I just got mine off, off of eBay. Like I found these cups and I went on Etsy and I found like a little chart that says, you know, this is, you know, you need this many cups a day of like vegetables and protein and carbs. And it tells you what carbs anyway, it, it's been amazing. And I hate counting carbs and I hate counting calories, but that is the only thing that has worked. And I'm super pumped because it's actually not that hard. I'm 41 and pregnant with my fifth. What are your thoughts about being an older mom? It's hard. I will say it was definitely with Maria. I was, I think 41 as well. Um, or maybe, yeah, 41. And it, it definitely is harder than the other ones, but obviously it's so worth it. Like Maria is just like, all the babies they're so worth it but just be gentler on yourself I think that was the hardest part for me I couldn't do everything I wanted I got tired so much quicker before the baby after the baby it's just it is I understand why <laughs> why you should have babies when you're younger but it's definitely worth it and doable my mom had her baby her last baby she had eight her last baby I think was when she was 39 and my mother-in-law had hers when she was 42. So it is worth it. There's a lot of women who go through it and you'll be great. Uh, what is the typical conversation during a family meal? I don't know, we could talk about that that day. Uh, we'll talk about the faith. I have faith in five over on my website, A Catholic Mom's Life. And it, those are great because you get to talk about the faith and every day there's a new one. And so a lot of families do that. Um, will you have any more children? We are. I mean, it's up to God, right? Like he, if you're a practicing Catholic, it should always be up to God. Okay, God needs to be the, you know, the center of that equation, right? It's all about God. Like all of these children, our whole life should be about God. Now, I, I would say that I am 44. I've had five C-sections. I've had three miscarriages. Thankfully, Maria was kind of in between. I had two miscarriages, Maria, and then I had another miscarriage. And so I do feel like naturally my body is like, yeah, th like this is not, um, I, th I do feel like naturally my body is like, yeah, you're not really going to have any more children. Um, <clears throat> but you never know. I, I never say never. God is so awesome. And I've always wanted 12, <laughs> 12 children. Um, but God can do anything. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. It's always up to God. Uh, fun Christmas traditions you would recommend to young families. I have a whole video on this. I will link it down below, but I would say just have it very Christ centered, but your advent, just like, I feel like there are so many, that's actually one of the videos I'm doing so many awesome 
Advent things that really help bring the faith and to prepare us for the coming of Jesus. So I think just stressing Jesus, but also having fun is good too. Um, so I will link all like my videos and what we do and all of that down below. Uh, why are you not posting on your other account, the daily prayer account? Uh, um, so I had paid somebody to do that and to like kind of set it up like daily. And I just have not found another person to do that for me. Um, but pretty much what that was, was I think it was the Immaculate Prayer Warriors. And every day you'd write your prayer intentions and everyone would pray for that. And it's over on Instagram and on Facebook. And so maybe I will start that up again. I thought of like doing this, this similar, very, very similar, but like people who actually need prayers. Like um, even like Matthew Perry just died. So put his picture up and please pray for Matthew Perry and for his soul or you know if your grandma died you can send me a picture and i'll put you know her picture or so and so has cancer my uncle bill has cancer please pray so i i really i have this vision but my execution is just not the best because i have a million things that i'm kind of working on to be honest but maybe i could pass that on to somebody and they, that could be their ministry i would love that that would be so great um so if you know anybody who has uh who is wanting to like minister that would be a great one i would love to give it to somebody but i love it and i would help promote it and everything but pretty much just a page where we're praying for each other constantly um what are your thoughts on the three days of darkness this is very scary to me yes it is very scary to think about um i've been i've heard about the three days of darkness since i was a little girl like i'm 44 like I, my mom told me about it and her and her friends would all sit around and talk about, you know, different married apparitions and, and that was something that came up quite regularly. But you think about like with Moses, like all the things that happen in the Bible, like all of those things, like God, God did those. So I, I have no, like he could do them, but he could also not do them. So I am aware of it. I have a three days of darkness candle. Will I ever use it? I have no idea. And my husband's aware of it too. And you know, it's something that we don't talk a lot about, but pretty much if you don't know what that is, it's, I'll see if I can find a link or something, but um, it's been kind of going around the internet, but I've, like I said, since I was a little girl, my mom would talk about it. And like th there's gonna be no stars or like nothing outside and it's gonna be scary and like demons will come to your door and pretend there's somebody else and wa wanna come in but you're not supposed to let anyone in. It's kind of like this very crazy intense thing but um, it's like the end times, you know, the great tribulation. And so do I think all that stuff is gonna happen anytime soon? I have no idea. I think it totally could. God can do anything. Uh, but I also think it could be in 300 years or, you know, farther down. I don't know. I have no idea. But um, but I have heard of it. It is very scary. And um, I don't dwell on it, though. But, you know, if something were to happen, I'm like, oh, this is what's going on, you know, type of thing. So the next one is, I am a gay man. Can I still attend mass and be practicing? Uh, there's there's videos that explain it much better than me. Um, I will link them down below, but pretty much um, you can't receive the Eucharist if you have sex outside of marriage. That is considered a, a grave sin. And you marriage is between a man and a woman that is the catholic faith i am catholic that is our beliefs but you are more than welcome to come to mass like everybody is welcome like we we love everybody but a part of it is like we want to be pure and holy for god so we don't make up the rules like you and i our community god gets to decide what is right and wrong and he did it's all in the bible the catholic church backs up the bible um and there are like actually really amazing communities that are following the catholic teachings like really well um i'll see if i can find them and link them down below and just a lot of podcasts that like talk about uh, about those things you know because we don't want people to feel isolated but also we want people 
to be close to God. And that is the whole mission of the Catholic faith is to bring people to Jesus and to love them. But also we need to be aware of our shortcomings and our sin and to ask God for forgiveness. So if that makes sense. What are your boundaries surrounding technology with your kids? Uh, my children will never have an iPhone. They will not have, I am very big. And the more that you learn about all the things that technology, how bad it is for the kids development, but also, I mean, we growing up, like we obviously didn't have that. And it was like, it, people had depression, but it was nothing like it is now. It is so bad right now. I would not wish on my worst enemy <laughs> that. And I'm in social media and I get bullied all the time. Like that just kind of goes with the territory. Thankfully, it doesn't really bother me anymore the way that it used to. Um, but it is hard. I'm a grown woman in my, you know, 44 and people still bully me on there and it's hard. Like I have to be like, no, that's not normal. Like God loves me. It's okay. Like I have to like give myself a little pep talk and I'm like not a teenager. Now, if I were a teenager and all that happened to me, I don't know what I would do. I would think I was the worst person in the world. And you know, it just like kind of puts everything on you anyway. I am not a fan. My children will never have a computer in their room. We have one like kind of family computer, but it's where everybody can see it. The kids don't know the, the passwords. They never will know the passwords. Um, yeah, with just por pornography and all of that, like it is huge to just like be proactive as parents. Yes, so that's how I feel. I'm very strong. Kids should not, I, I told my son already, you will never have an iPhone or anything until you're out of high school. Um, they do have, it's called a Gab watch or a Gab phone and it's literally, you can only call, there's like three numbers you can call and you can text only the people that the, you know, the parents say and that I think we're getting for Thomas for his birthday this year. Um, so I, I'm fine with that, but like they can't send pictures, they can't receive pictures, like all, so anyway, yeah, I could go, I could do a whole video on that. So that's all I have for right now. I hope that you enjoyed. Until next time, I will see you all later. God bless. Bye.